Researchers at UBC have given new meaning to the term finding diamonds in the rough. A recent breakthrough means scientists can now identify where diamonds are buried by looking at microorganisms in the soil. But it's not just diamonds. Researchers say the soil analysis technique can be used to find all sorts of minerals, including those essential to the green energy transition. Our scientist Darius Madavi joins us now to explain how all of this works. Darius, microorganisms, soil, diamonds, how are these all connected? It might seem a bit random. I mean, most people think of bacteria as being what causes infection or in their gut, but it makes sense. Let's think about if we had uh, a, a, a mineral that's buried deep underground and we have uh, the uh, soil directly above it is going to be altered as a result of that mineral. And then the soil above that will also be altered all the way up to the surface. So in this case, let's say that uh, mineral is kimberlite. This is the rock that can contain diamond ore. As it alters the chemistry of the soil, that'll be carried up right to the surface where we have microbes. And those microbes will change as a result of those minerals. So there's already been work done on testing the soil chemistry directly to test for the makeup that might suggest certain mineral deposits below. But the changes can be very subtle and easy to miss, which is why we're lucky to have people like Bianca Phillips, a PhD student at UBC, who is smart enough to ask for help from a surprising place, those microbes. They are better geochemists than we are. Um, when it comes to geochemistry, we're really just limited by uh, our analytical tools. Um, so the instrumentation, how sensitive is it? Um, how subtle of, a, of an anomaly um, are we actually going to see? Um, but microbes, there's so many of them in the soil. Um, we have sort of a bigger, um, kind of a bigger toolbox to a certain extent um, that might potentially be indicators to play with. Um, and they are very sensitive to changes in their environment. And this really works. So Phillips and her collaborators tested this in the lab by adding kimberlite to soil from tundras and seeing how the community of microbes in the soil changed. And then armed with that knowledge, they went out into the field in the Northwest Territories and found that those same microbes that loved the addition of kimberlite to the diamond ore, to the uh, rock containing diamond ore in their soil in the lab were found in high quantities above a known kimberlite deposit. And at a second site, those same indicator microbes precisely located kimberlite buried tens of meters underground. Wow. So, Darius, I understand you were not the biggest fan of diamonds. Can we find other things with this method? Yes, and for good reason. Diamonds are objectively overpriced, and they're not actually a rare rock. Uh, they're really just riding on possibly the most successful marketing campaign ever. But that's a story for another time. And fortunately, yes, using these same methods, we could identify indicator microbes for all sorts of minerals. The researchers are already looking into what species of microbe might suggest copper deposits below, which would be huge for the green energy transition because we need those for batteries and new technologies. And this could be used for a whole host of other minerals as well. Here's what Phillips had to say. I think where we really see this potentially having an impact um, is in these covered environments where we don't know what's going on. We're not getting geochemical signal perhaps at all, or at least not a very good one. Um, and the microbes might might actually be sensitive enough to, to tell us where things are and hopefully allow us to find more mineral deposits. So can people zip home now and start turning the sod in their backyard if they actually have a yard? <laughs> We're not quite there yet. <laughs> now, uh, the researchers have started to identify good indicator species for kimberlites, meaning diamonds, and copper in the Northwest Territories, but this is only the start. After all, mineral deposits are not the only thing that determines what species are in the soil. We have different climates and other things that really matter. Um, when we're talking about copper, that's going to affect them in a very different way than than a, than a kimberlite um, diamond or, or wood. So, yeah, very different communities. But when it comes to soils, you know, there's no one community that's homogenous or the same across the world. But we do see patterns in soils um, depending on the climate. So now Phillips is working to untangle the effects of climate and soil types and all these other factors with the end goal of building up databases of indicator species that could be used in many different environments, which would be huge considering the current toolbox for seeking out new mineral deposits is actually very limited. And this would be an incredibly powerful tool to add to that toolbox. Climate and science specialist Darius Madavi, it's never boring. Thanks very much. Thanks, Dan.